In this video, you're going to learn what is the network of teams play, the pre-work necessary to run the play, guidance and tips on how to facilitate the play, and how you should follow up after running the play. Well, let me introduce you to Atlassian's latest play in our playbook, the network of teams. It's a fantastic play focused on how we can actually examine and identify the collaboration networks that our teams have. In today's modern world of work, it's very rare for a team to not need the help of others in order to complete their goals. The problem is, is that most teams, when thinking about who they need, they determine that too late in the process and they ultimately miss it in the end. This results in things like miscommunication on what's needed, things like missed deadlines, and ultimately just frustrated teams. We want to build a shared understanding, not just within our team, but across teams. And this is done through doing things like the network teams. It's actually one of four plays that we at Atlassian believe that every team should pursue in order to help shape the way they work together. The focus is on how we collaborate with those teams outside of our team and, and maintain and build those relationships. Now, I do have one recommendation though. Before you run a network of teams play, what you should do is make sure you've established your team poster first. This is a play that's focused in on understanding the team's purpose and essentially what success looks like for us. Part of identifying the network of teams is actually understanding what teams are needed to actually help us accomplish our goals and be successful. If we don't understand what success looks like, we don't understand our purpose, we're just going to be guessing in terms of what teams we think we need versus the ones we actually need. All right, we're just about ready to run the play. So before you actually bring everyone together to start doing this mapping, there's a couple things I want you to consider. First, make sure you've set up the space to support how you want people to connect. If you're remote or hybrid, like most teams out there, you're gonna to wanna to set up a digital space for you to collaborate. Maybe use a Trello template for the network of teams or a mural board. Now, if you're in person, you can get kind of fun and have big pieces of paper on the wall, stickies, drawing this giant network of teams, which is great. I love that. But you need to remember that you still need to translate that, that physical network of teams into a digital form eventually so that you can share that with the teams as well as update it over time. And two, identify any external team members you'd actually like to have present in your network of teams play. Now, it's not normally something you'll do is to include external folks in, but if maybe you have a strong relationship with a team already, it may be a good idea to actually include a representative so that you can talk about your relationship and figure out how you want to improve it going forward. All right, I think it's time to run the play. And if you want to follow along, what I encourage you to do is click the link down below. It'll take you to the Network of Teams play in the playbook. And this way you can follow along step by step and kind of get an idea of what we're trying to pursue while we're doing this activity. All right, the day is here. It's time to run our network of teams. First thing we're gonna do is actually begin with some team brainstorming. This is our opportunity to kind of come up with what are those different teams that we think are out there. And our goal is actually to classify teams with two different characteristics. The first characteristic is level of influence. Is a team critical to our success, meaning we can't actually complete our work without them? Are they involved with our success, but they're not on that critical path? The second characteristic is actually the type of team each team you identify is. Are they a delivery team? Are they a service team? Maybe a, another project team that's out there. Now, one thing I'm gonna recommend here is that sometimes when teams start thinking about the different types of teams, they can start going down some rabbit holes that actually takes away from the purpose of the exercise. What I encourage you to do, put that to the side. It's simply there to help you identify maybe the type of relationships you need to have, but it's not critical to identifying which teams you need help from. All right, next, we're gonna look at those teams in our critical to success circle. Now, here's the thing. If there's five or less teams there, awesome. That means each of those we need to focus on. If there are more than five, what I typically recommend is teams prioritize those teams and ultimately start with that top five. Once we've identified the five teams, now the important part happens. This is where we actually need to identify who's gonna own the relationship with those teams. 
Now, when we come into this, we know there's teams that we need help from, but a lot of times we don't know how to begin that conversation. Well, it's easy. We assign someone to go and say hi. Go over there and say, you know what? We'd like to build this relationship with you. Let's talk about it. So we've established our owners. And going back to our example as a brand new team, at this point, we can kind of stop. We've identified those critical teams. We have owners for those, and we don't really have relationships yet. So that's what we're going to go pursue. So awesome. We can wrap that up. But if you're an existing team, if you're a team that's been doing this for a while, I recommend you proceed to the next step in the play, which is actually identifying the health of those relationships. Here, we'll actually use lines to signify that on our network of teams. If we do draw a solid line from our team to their team, it means we have a really strong relationship. If we do a dashed line, with that dashed line, it signifies that we have more of an ad hoc relationship. And finally, if we do a dotted line to that team, it means that that relationship needs some help. The whole goal here is to identify for those owners of those relationships, what's the current health? So that way they can start mending those bridges as they start that conversation. For those critical teams you identify, those top five, make sure your relationship owners are actually doing their job. Make sure they're building those relationships. It could simply just be a meeting that they're having with them to talk about how do we want to work together? Or it could be a regular session that they put on the calendar. Whatever the case, make sure there's some sort of connection happening. And just like a retrospective, I typically recommend teams come back and reflect on their network teams on a regular basis. Maybe every six months or so, you come back and rerun the play. The purpose being is your relationships will have changed over time. Some may strengthen, some may weaken, new ones may emerge. Your network of teams is evolving. So what we need to do is continue to evolve with it.